Hey everyone, today we're going to have a look at how I made this idle animation in three easy steps. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for a little surprise. Now before we get onto the main bulk of the video, I'd like to ask you to please smash that subscribe button, give me a like and a comment below. And now onto step one. The first thing that I normally do when starting any animation is to gather as much reference as possible. Now for this shot, I did want to go through the style of Mortal Kombat or Capcom, those types of 2D sprite based animations. And for this, I picked this cowboy as reference. You can find links to this in the description below. So once I found the great reference, I start by blocking out the basic shape. I start with the feet and the hips because they ground the animation into the scene and will carry all of the weight of the character itself. Once I've started posing the rest of the body, working all the way through to the arms and the fingers of the character, I then start looking at the overall shape and silhouette of the pose. Now once I've got a strong pose, I move on to animating the centre of gravity or the core of the body. Now from here, I don't really have a, a particular end goal in mind. I normally just go with the flow, make a few mistakes here and there. I generally take my time with it because this has the most impact on the rest of the animation. After I've got the core motion looking really nice, I then move on to offsetting the rest of the limbs, starting with the torso. This brings us on to step two. Step two is using a process called space switching, something I first heard the great animator Richard Lico talk about in his SIGGRAPH presentation. In my opinion, it's a great talk and it gives a wide range of applications for this technique. If you want to learn more about how I use this technique, then let me know in the comments and I'll make a separate video about them. So to do this in Blender, you'd first create an empty and then head over to the object constraint panel and create a copy location constraint. You would then choose the armature as the target and the selected bone as the constrained bone. You would then bake the action by pressing F3 and baking all the animation to the object. Make sure to remove the constraint when you do this. When you do this, make sure you click visual keying and clear constraints. Once you have this motion baked onto the empty, you can then constrain the original bone back onto the empty and use the empty as an offset. With the animation baked onto the empty, you can press Ctrl Shift M to cycle the animation and then offset it just like this. This process is the same for a rotational based offset, except you'll use a uh, copy rotation instead of copy transforms. For the sake of this video, I won't be doing this for every part of the body and instead I've created a plugin that does this automatically. I'll be using this plugin throughout the video and if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description below. So with this idea in mind, I work with the torso first. Now I don't really have any real process to this, I'm just offsetting it until it feels right. The main thing that I'm looking for is to make sure that there's no obscure movements that stick out while looping because remember, in video games, if there's one thing that's off in a game animation loop, you will spot it and you will never ever unsee it. I use a similar process mixing transformational offsets and rotational offsets through all of the limbs and the body, starting from the torso and working my way through to the arms. Now I don't use this process for the fingers, I actually use something different, which brings me on to step three. Step three is a different story and it uses something different than space switching but a similar kind of idea in which I'm reusing animation. Now I do this almost every day. If I've already done an animation then I will reuse it again and again to save time. So I took some of the motion from the center of gravity control because I like the timing and I used it to drive the fingers rotation. I offset it at each knuckle and then once I was happy with that animation I then offset each finger accordingly. Starting with the index finger, I then moved through the hand and ended at the pinky finger. 
gradually making the offset larger and larger until I got a nice rolling of the fingers as if the Mandalorian is itching to pull the trigger. I did the similar thing on the left hand but kept the movement a bit more subtle as I wanted this to just be a bit more of an overlapping motion rather than something that the Mandalorian was consciously thinking about. Once I've animated the whole body, I then move on to adding the final touches of the cape. Again, the cape uses space switching, particularly rotational data, and I use this to offset not only from the top down to the bottom of the cape, but also the three controls controlling the left side, the right side, and the middle. While I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep in mind that the curve follows a sine wave, or something similar. Now that all of the animation has been put into place, the final touches are adjusting the shader to make it look a bit cartoony, adding a stroke on the edges to make it look as if it was hand drawn, and then boom, this is the final shot. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I've got a lot planned for the future, and for sticking around this long, here's a sneak peek of what's coming next.